Hi guys. Well, the last thing God told me happened Monday, March 14th, 2022. Exactly two months ago now to the day. It's now May 14th. But back then, March 14th, that morning I got online and there on my desktop computer's home screen was a news article entitled, Influencers Get Raging Response from Restaurant After Asking for Free Food. Guys, at that very moment, the words of the prophet who called me out back in 1983 when I was 12 years old flashed across my mind. For God is going to place you in a position one day to be able to influence multitudes of people. Guys, I about fell out. Influencer. Have you heard this word lately? This is the word the world has coined just in the last five years to refer to someone on social media with a large following. They're now known as an influencer. So me, with my 210,000 subscribers here on YouTube, would be called an influencer. If a news article was written about me today, they'd say, Influencer Gabriel Ansley Herb. Guys, this is the very word God spoke over me back in 1983. He prophesied my life the position I'd be in, to the very word. God is going to place you in a position to be able to influence. What? Stunning. So I went on a search of this word, influencer, and I found out the word was just added to the dictionary in 2019. Merriam-Webster recently announced it has added the word influencer to the 2019 dictionary. Influencer has been a term mostly used these days as part of various industries involving social media to describe individuals with a large following. I found this graph on dictionary.com showing how the word only caught on in 2016. But really, it's only been in the last couple of years that you see it regularly now in news articles. I've seen it too. But it wasn't until March 14th of this year, 2022, that God opened my eyes to what he had prophesied about me all those years ago, back in 1983 almost 40 years ago now. And realize, for the record, I wrote the prophet's words down back in 2008 on page one of my book, Undeniable Biblical Proof, Jesus Christ Will Return to Planet Earth Exactly 2,000 Years After the Year of His Death. This book was registered with the Library of Congress back in 2009. They literally got a paperback copy of it back in 2009. I also made a testimony video of my life that I uploaded to YouTube in 2010, where I have the prophet's words written. And you can see here that video was uploaded to YouTube September 15, 2010. Here, I'll play the part with the prophet's words for you.
see it? One day God will place you in a position to be able to influence. Guys, I have never forgotten the prophet's words. I've told those words to people my whole life, ever since 1983. His words were permanently ingrained in my mind. I even said that back in 2017 in part three of my 10 part 2028N video series. Part three was uploaded to YouTube November 6, 2017. Here, I'll play that for you. This reminds me of an incredible encounter I had back in 1983 when I was just a young boy, 12 years old. I gotta tell you this story. My dad had seen an ad in the newspaper about a traveling prophet who was gonna speak in a church that we had never been to. Dad was curious about what a prophet was today. You have to understand our family, we'd only been going to church for two years at this time, so we didn't know much. Well, we went and near the end of the prophet's message that night, he walked back the center aisle, he pointed at me, and he said, Stand up, son. Do you know God gave you your name? For it is Gabriel. Well, he had my attention with that. I was thinking, how does he know my name? And he continued, Son, God's placed the creativity of four men inside of you, and you will be like John the Baptist in the last days, preparing the people to meet the Lord. For God's going to place you in a position one day to be able to influence multitudes of people. Well, I sat down, bewildered. My head was spinning. I'm actually amazed I've never forgotten the words he spoke over me. It's like they were permanently ingrained in my mind. I mean, think about it. I was only 12. I never wrote them down, and yet I've never forgotten what he said. And I never tried to self-fulfill the words. I just lived my life. I finished high school. I went to college majoring in chemistry and biochemistry. I wanted to be a doctor. And then in my mid-twenties, of all things, I decided to move to Nashville to be a country music singer. So as you can see, I wasn't trying to make the prophet's words be true in my life. Well, there you go, guys. And by the way, I used to wonder through the years, why the cryptic words? God's going to place you in a position one day to be able to influence. What? Why not just say what it is? You're going to be a preacher who saves many. You're going to be an evangelist who ministers to many. Why the vague, a position to influence? Well, now I know. Because the position didn't even exist back in 1983. There was no internet. There was no social media. There was no smartphones. Yet with those words, God was not vague. He had prophesied my life perfectly accurate. For now today, the position God was going to put me in is called an influencer. <laughs> Guys, this is remarkable. It's stunning. And yet it's exactly like the God of the Bible. For he often prophesies things to the very word. In my 2028N video series, I told you in day three of creation, he said he gathered the waters together and the dry land appeared, which foretold of the biggest event to occur Earth's third millennium, which was the parting of the Red Sea. And when that event happened, 
God said with the breath of his nostrils, the waters were gathered together, and the Israelites went across on dry land. See, God prophesied this event to the very words in the creation story. In day four of creation, he said he created the greater and lesser lights. What? Why not the sun and the moon? Because when John the Baptist and Jesus came along during Earth's fourth millennium, God referred to them both as lights and that Jesus was greater than John. John said, he must become greater. I must become less. Jesus said, you were willing to rejoice in John's light, but I have a greater witness than John's. See it? God prophesies things to the very word. And so God prophesying through that prophet back in 1983 prophesied my life to the very word. The position I'm in is an influencer. God's going to place you in a position one day to be able to influence. Here, let me help you understand how remarkable this is by showing you some other words God could have used. That would have been perfectly fine and logical, but then he would not have prophesied my life to the very word. How about impact? For God's going to place you in a position one day to be able to impact multitudes of people. See? Perfectly fine. How about persuade? For God's going to place you in a position one day to be able to persuade multitudes of people. Makes perfect sense. How about affect? It's going to place you in a position one day to be able to affect multitudes of people. Or how about teach? You're going to teach multitudes of people. Or instruct. Or sway. Or change. You're going to change. You're going to be in a position one day to be able to change multitudes of people or inspire, or even bless. He's going to put you in a position one day to be able to bless multitudes of people. Guys, there must be hundreds of other ways God could have described the position he was going to put me in instead of a position to influence. Do you see it now? It's stunning. For that's the very position I'm on social media as an influencer. And by the way, I want to tell you one more thing about that night back in 1983. Guess where the church was located? It was on a mountaintop. It's called Chickie's Rock located in Lancaster County. I was born and raised in a town called Mount Joy, but this church that we had never been to was near a town called Columbia, and it sat on the very top of a mount called Chickie's Rock. Guys, do you remember in the Bible, God often met with his prophets on mountaintops, Abraham on Mount Moriah, Moses on Mount Sinai, Elijah on Mount Horeb, Jesus on Mount of Transfiguration, and on and on. So why did God meet with me that night back in 1983 in a church that was located on a mountaintop? Why was that where the traveling prophet was speaking that night? Something to think about. But listen, why am I telling you all this? Is it for my glory? No. Guys, I think of myself 
as less than nothing. I'm a nobody. Do you get that? But this message I speak, it is the real deal. It's from the Creator God. 2028 end and its salvation message is from Yahweh. You're missing out big time if you don't listen to my message. Why would you pass on a message that God has proven so many times has come from Him? Listen to the 10-part 2028 end video series. Listen to the 12-part Salvation Equation series. Listen to the 10 Love Commandment series. That's my message. That's the message God wanted me to deliver to the world. It's the message that has me here, like God said, like John the Baptist, preparing people to meet the Lord. I promise my message will influence you to live a lifestyle that will land you in heaven. And that day is not long off. Well, the ball's in your court. God has brought to pass, no doubt, the words he spoke over me back in 1983. For truly, he has placed me in a position to be able to influence a multitude of people. And I pray you're one of them. Blessings to you and yours.